Has this ever happened to you? You get your hands on some exciting new novelty yarn or some cool new needles, set out looking for a sweater pattern, and can't find a thing to make? Well, today I'm going to show you how to take a top you already love and use it as a template so you can know how many stitches to cast on and knit for a custom sweater that fits with no pattern at all. So first of all, let me show you my template top. I picked this sweatshirt because I liked the length and it had an oversized fit. If this is your first time going patternless on a sweater, oversized is your friend because you don't have to be as precise in your measurements. Also, this sweater has no unique shaping, no curved hems or slanted seams, and importantly, no inset sleeves. We want the sleeve seam to be more or less straight in line with the side seam. And I can see that the body is basically two rectangles seamed together, which is super easy to pull off with knitting. We can make a rectangle, right? You may notice that the sleeve does have shaping and more experienced knitters can pull this off with decreases, but planning those and how they're spread out is a little beyond the scope of this video. So we'll just be using the sleeves for a basic length and width measurement. And fortunately for us, balloon sleeves are super popular right now. No shaping required. So what measurements do we take from our favorite oversized dropped sleeve basic top? Well, we'll need the body length, body width, sleeve length, sleeve width at the widest point, and also the neckline width. And if you feel like you need to write that down, I already did it for you. There's a helpful, free printable to go along with the video linked down below. And you'll see here in the middle of the printable something about the magic equation. For that, you'll need your gauge. And to do that, you'll need to make a gauge swatch. Here is my sample gauge swatch. I made it a little supersized for this video. You can get away with a smaller swatch, but it's just a little square of the stitch pattern you're looking to use in your sweater so that we can measure and literally count our stitches in a certain number of inches. Four inches or 10 centimeters is pretty standard but with my chunky yarn, I only had five and a half stitches in four inches, so I bumped it up to five inches to get a gauge stitch count that was a whole number, seven stitches in five inches. So you'll write that down under stitches in five inches on the printable. Then we'll do rows. Measure the same inches vertically and count the rows. Add them to the printable. And now we know our stitches and rows per inch on the swatch. We know our inches from the sweater. So if you remember middle school algebra, we can cross multiply to get our sweater stitch counts. I don't know if they teach it this way anymore in school, but just in case, or just to jog your memory, we've got gauge stitches on top, gauge inches on the bottom. We've got sweater stitches on top, our unknown represented as our variable X, and our desired sweater inches are on the bottom. Then we're gonna solve for X by multiplying this number by this number, and this number by this number, dividing out the X to get our missing stitch count. I showed my work in this little example down here. So say I have 10 stitches in five inches. We wanna know how many stitches we need to get 25 inches. We'll multiply 10 by 25 and five by X. Divide both sides by five to separate out the X and get 50 stitches in 25 inches. If I do the same calculation for my sweater gauge of seven stitches and my sweater width of 20 inches, I get 28 stitches. And if you get a decimal, just round up to the next whole number. One more thing. Anytime you're seaming two edges together, like when you're knitting flat pieces, add two to your stitch count because one stitch on either edge gets eaten up by the seam. So my grand front panel stitch total is 30. 28 plus two for seaming. So I cast on 30 and I knit 33 rows, which I determined by using our handy cross multiply formula again, except with my row gauge count and sweater length measurement from earlier. As for the neckline, now if you just seam two rectangles together, leaving an opening for your head, you'll get this kind of high and tight neckline. There are two simple ways around this. One is to make your neck opening a bit bigger for a more relaxed boat neck or off the shoulder style. The other option is with a little simple shaping on the front panel by binding off in the middle of your work and adding a little extra length to the shoulder bits so that your sweater will sit a little lower in the front. When you're about two rows from your bind off, you'll just need your total front panel stitch count minus your neck opening stitch count. Divide that by two to get your shoulder stitch count. Knit that number. For me, it's eight. Then bind off the neck opening stitch count. In my case, 14 stitches.
Now I've got my neck opening stitches bound off. My stitches from the start are just gonna chill over here on my circular cord for now. And I can knit the remaining stitches. This one on my right needle counts and I should have eight stitches here as well. And you'll have two sets of live shoulder stitches with a neckline bound off in the middle. Now I can add length to the shoulders and I'm gonna start on this side where my working yarn is ready to go. I'll do one more wrong side row And then, on this next right side row, I can bind off. And we've added a little extra height to this shoulder. Now I just gotta reattach my yarn to work one more wrong side row of the stitches over here that we're patiently waiting. and bind those off as well. If you did do this shoulder shaping part, I wanna show you this little visual gap you'll get between your two bind offs. You can fill it with this little tail left over from where you fastened on. Just thread it under the first bind off stitch and back through the other side. To kind of add a bind off stitch where it looked like one was missing before. With the front and back panels done, you can seam along the shoulders. I grabbed a tapestry needle and threaded it with the tail from one of the panels. I can fasten onto the second panel by threading through the little corner here. And I'm gonna use the mattress stitch for a clean looking secure seam. To do this, I'm gonna work under the stitches just next to my bind off edge. And I'll have links to helpful seaming tutorials down below. Now with both the shoulders seamed, we can talk sleeves. And you've got a lot of options here. You can make front and back panels like we did for the body following your sleeve measurements from earlier with seams along the top and bottom. You can make one panel that's double the width and fold it around into a little tube with one underarm seam. If you knit your sleeves like this with the stitches running parallel to the body, easy peasy, you'll just work with your row gauge to determine sleeve width and seam your rows one for one. If you've got your stitches running perpendicular like mine, there's something to consider. Knit stitches are a little wider than they are tall, so when seaming stitches to rows, you usually have to wind up skipping every few rows while seaming. Three stitches for every four rows, for example. But we can use this feature to our advantage as a shorthand way to get perfect, easy balloon sleeves with no extra calculations or seaming. Remember that sleeve width measurement from earlier? I used it along with my row gauge to figure out how many rows I needed to get that width. In my case, eight and a half inches, ensuring that my sweater wouldn't be too tight in the armpits. Then I picked up a stitch in each one of those rows without skipping any. So my sleeve will be quite a bit wider than the armhole, hence the balloon sleeve. I'll show you how I picked up those stitches just in case you haven't picked up stitches before. I'll find my shoulder seam and find this last row of Vs here right before the very edge. And inserting my needle into that stitch I can grab a new yarn and pull up a stitch right through there. Just like that. Then I can insert my needle into the next stitch. And pull up a stitch. Continuing until I've picked up the number I need for eight and a half inches worth of rows which, remember, will be more than eight and a half inches worth of stitches. 
Then to get the other half of my sleeve stitches, I'm going to take the opportunity to start working in the round. Less seaming for me. Yay! I actually got a count, 19 rows from the shoulder seam. And pick up directly into that last row on the other panel. I'm going to make sure it's pretty tight to help me bridge that underarm gap. And I'll continue picking up stitches until I come back to where I started. So I can start working in the round. Then I can just knit around and around until I nearly have my sleeve length measurement from the sample top. All that's left is to make a cuff. And if you were curious about how I changed color in this sweater, I can show you that now. It's just a little one row fair aisle where I worked the first two stitches of the row in the new color. And then one in the old color. Leaving a little wrap in the back. I did this for one row only, and then fully switched to the new color. So, to taper off these oversized balloon sleeves, and really get that trendy cinched cuff, I was able to knit two together for one whole round. So knitting every two stitches together to cut my stitch count in half. Then I changed to smaller needles, one size down. Not 100% necessary if you don't have these handy interchangeable needles or if you don't have the size below, but I do recommend a ribbing like the Knit One Pearl One rib that I use for my cuffs. And I worked Knit One Pearl One for a few rounds until I had a cuff that was about two inches wide. I had to start working in magic loop eventually since I had so few and tight stitches on my needle they didn't reach all the way around anymore. You could also use double pointed needles. Binding off in pattern, so knitting the knits and purling the pearls, will produce a stretchy enough bind off for the bottom of your sleeve. And since we picked up sleeve stitches in the round, all that's left is to seam up these sides up to the underarm. Again, I'm using the mattress stitch for a really beautiful finish, and I've got my tapestry needle threaded with the tail. I fastened on to the opposite side. And to begin mattress stitching this vertical seam, I'm going to find the very edge and go one half stitch in to find the first visible V-shaped stitch. Insert my needle down into the center of that V and pick up a ladder and one more ladder just to make the seaming go a little faster. Come to the other side. Again, into the stitch. Pick up a ladder and another one and seam. Come back to the other side and go into where you came out of before. Pick up two more ladders and seam. And the cool thing about mattress stitch is that you can pull it really tight and draw those edges together for a very nice looking and structured seam. So that is my little no pattern sweater recipe. I hope you use this as a jumping off point to create all kinds of new sweater designs. You can play with colors and different lengths and even pick up neck stitches to do a turtleneck the possibilities are endless from here. And if you're like, eh, this isn't for me, I just want to follow a pattern, be sure to subscribe because I've got plenty of those coming up as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs> Hello, babe. You're giving me great bloopers.